And I'm going to do that. All right. And I am going to pass things off to um, Andrew Trickett and Gail Simons to talk with us about merge today. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat um, as we go along. And you can also feel free to type in the chat what your name is, where you're coming from, um, what your role is, those kinds of things. It'd be nice to, to see who's here with us today. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Emma. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Andrew Trickett, and I'm one of the co-founders of Merge. Um, I kind of oversee uh, the, most of the business aspects. So, you know, for your purposes, I oversee sales, uh, onboarding and training slash customer support, customer success and customer support. So we kind of cover it all in terms of the life cycle uh, of our relationship. My uh, business partner uh, no, huh? the side of things, and I'm joined by Gail. Uh, Gail Simons is uh, the rep who, uh, the account executive who covers your area. And uh, I think a lot of you have probably been in correspondence with her, uh, kind of helping through the order process and, uh, and, and many other details. And she'll continue to be lead uh, on working with you uh, along the way as we kind of get past the ordering phase into getting you guys uh, up and going and successful, uh, you know, with the products that you want from us. So, uh, uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started, and hopefully you can see my screen. Uh, Emma, kind of let me know that. Um, sorry. So the context that I have, you know, coming in for today's session is that this is going to be the first of multiple sessions, and I have two core assumptions. One is that the vast majority of you are obviously intrigued. Uh, you purchased at least one bundle uh, involving our product. Thank you. Uh, first of all, let me, let me say that. Um, but I'm just kind of assuming that uh, few, if any of you are deeply familiar with uh, Merge EDU. I also have an assumption that um, although we'll need to work together to uh, you know meet the requirements of the program, you know the the deadline requirements, that you're going to be you know kind of looking until January to really start using it. So those are the that's the context that I have you know for this session. So the goals uh, that we set for it is that um, I think we're kind of getting past this phase for most folks, but uh, we still have you know a couple of. Uh, uh, schools have reached out to us even yesterday and, and, and on Friday just to make sure we can give some quick help or uh, tips on ordering. Um, so just a little bit of that, but uh, most of it is going to be about the product. And this is intended, this session is intended to be an orientation. So an overview of the components, because there are uh, four components of the Merge EDU platform. It is not intended uh, to be a step-by-step you know, PD session that comes later. Um, and we'll be, you know, working with Emma to, you know, kind of shape those uh, subsequent sessions and that's where those will happen. Uh, but we also do want to discuss, you know, once we kind of give an overview of the product, what it is, is that how we've seen, uh, you know, your peers, not only around the country, but around the world, use it for various educational programs. And I think also one of our really important goals here is uh, to the degree that if we don't have it yet, it's just establish a one-on-one -on -one contact for, you know, with myself, but especially with Gail, because our goal is to, you know, take what this product can do and shape it to your specific needs and preferences, you know, at least starting out, uh, say, you know, late this month, early next month. So those are the goals for the session, kind of a merge one-on-one session. All right, so in terms of the agenda, what I'm going to run through uh, is, you know, these will be the sections, is what are the educational challenges that Merge EDU is designed to help with? Well, you know, we don't pretend that we solve all of your educational uh, challenges, but there's a couple that we do. Uh, it's great for helping to address. Um, another thing that we're going to get into is what is the whole Merge Cube experience, the technological platform and the user's experience uh, what it is and, and how it's used because the content, there's lots of different types of content that we utilize and also some third parties utilize to deliver up experiences, you know, for you and your students. Uh, then we'll be getting into an overview and a demo of the Merge EDU components themselves. Uh, I'll then get into how Merge EDU is used in educational programs to give you some ideas and some inspiration, you know, for brainstorming so you can think about, well, you know, here's a lot of different ways it has been used, how white how might we use it, you know, starting out. Um, uh, probably spend just a little bit of time on help with ordering to the degree that, uh, you know, some of you still have some challenges there and also provide some initial guidance in terms of how we can help you tailor, you know, your setup and usage of it. So that's today's agenda. 
Um, I guess one thing since it has come up is, you know, on the subscription period, actually, let me, yeah, um, what we'll, we'll kind of quickly say that we're, we're still working on, you know, what exactly the requirements are in terms of an activation, but I'll just kind of pledge, you know, as one of the co-founders of the company, that we're going to make sure that you get uh, 12 months of good usage, you know, out of, you know, each subscription. Um, so let's talk, let's get into the challenges uh, that we help address. Um, I would say that there are primarily three. One is that, um, you know, engagement was always difficult. It's been difficult for a long time and it got even worse, you know, with the pandemic. And even though things are kind of sort of normal and hopefully knock on wood, they'll stay that way, you know, through this winter, still uh, engagement is a major problem that's gotten worse. And as you know, as professional educators, that when students are not engaged, that they're everything's bad, right? They're less satisfied, um, they uh, achieve less, and their graduation rates are lower. So, you know, what I would say is that Things that are engaging used to be really nice to have. They're really must-haves now. That that is an experience that the students will willingly lean into, so that they'll actually get something you know out of that experience. So that's the first challenge. The second challenge, again, you know, I'm not telling you anything that you don't know, but just kind of reinforcing some things that we can help with is that students need differentiated instruction, and you need a lot of tools in your kit, right? So you can uh, try different things with different students, depends on what works well for them. But in general, you know, the vast majority of us are visual spatial learners, you know, by nature, it's the pedagogy that works best for us. Uh, things that are visual and interactive, you know, are engaging. Uh, the more senses we involve in the experience, the more powerful it is, so multi-sensory engagement. Uh, is uh, is a key. Things that are active, things that are hands-on, again, are powerful. And then for students who need, you know, reading support tools. So there's a lot of differentiated instructional needs that come along in, you know, in your uh, educational missions. And then the third thing is that in general, and we kind of hinted at it uh, on the previous page, is that hands-on inquiry is incredibly valuable, right? There's something magical and your brain operates in a different way if you're holding it in your hand and you're inspecting it versus just looking at it on a screen, right? Um, but, uh, you know, the way that this has traditionally been done is physical models or teaching aid kits or mani manipulative. So those are just three different phrases for the same thing because we've learned that educators use different phrases for that. Um, they're valuable, but there's a lot of challenges with them, right? One is that access to them can be very limited. Uh, they tend to be quite expensive. They get liberated, you know, uh, pieces go missing, information becomes uh, outdated. And because of the nature of them, uh, take-home learning, at-home learning is simply not feasible, right? Um, but without access to these models, you know, manipulatives, teaching aids, students that struggle to understand certain concepts that are, uh, you know, complex in nature. And so that's another uh, major challenge that we decided to take on with this platform. So with those challenges, um, let's get into, you know, what we built, you know, to, to address them. And here I'm switching over to a basic overview of what we call the merge cube experience. And uh, this is kind of a, a nice video to suggest in terms of the different types of content that we've created to give this hands-on experience. Uh, and by the way, for those of you who haven't actually seen it, you know, this is a merge cube here that I'm holding in front of me. It's a little bit bigger than a Rubik's cube on each side. It's got a lot of busy patterns going on. And uh, so what's happening, hopefully this just from the presentations doing a good job of uh, uh, portraying it is that, and here I'm going to slow down a bit, is that you're holding the cube in your hand, you're running an app on a device, the device, uh, sorry, the app communicates with the cube through the device's camera. We're using uh, a technology called computer vision. Uh, the way that you can think about it, although this is not strictly true, and for those of you who are deeply technical familiar, will probably cringe when I say this, but think of it as a Q, uh, super QR code. So what's happening is that your eyes and, and all of the interactions happening with the device's screen, but it creates this uh, a series of really powerful illusions. One of those is that, wow, I'm holding this hologram, this digital uh, image, this 3D object in my hand, you know, first and foremost. Um, some other things that it does it is actually fools the brain into feeling that object. And this is where it becomes multi-sensory and becomes a hands-on experience 
and not just a visual thing that you're looking at on the screen, your, your brain and your hand are now connected because it has become a hands-on experience with this content. And this is where we actually have quite a few patents uh, on it, but this is what the, this is what's really special about the whole merge cube platform, merge cube experience. So uh, depending on uh, the app or the section of the app, different sorts of content will be served up to the students. Uh, in this particular GIF, uh, this is one of my favorites. It's a, a simulation related to the tectonic plates, but it could be animated dinosaurs. It could be different wave patterns. Um, and we'll show you some other apps uh, and some other content. Uh, but that's essentially what's happening from a technical standpoint and, what, and fundamentally what's going on. And so what it serves up some additional, I'm not going to say that this is true for every user and for every piece of content, but some the solutions kind of extend not only to I'm seeing this in my hand, I'm feeling this in my hand, but even feeling non-cubic shapes, even though you're holding a static cube, it has no moving parts. You know, here in uh, this particular gym, we'll have people come out and say, my brain was fooled into feeling a sphere in my hand and sometimes even feeling movement. Again, I don't wanna make that claim for every piece of content for every user, but it is a very powerful set of illusions and that's what makes it so engaging. I've learned with educators not to use the word fun, but it is fun, it, it's super cool. The, the kids love it, the teachers love it. And uh, kind of speaking to some of the challenges that uh, I talked about up front is that what's great about augmented reality and virtual reality in their fundamental nature, it is a deep immersion in visual spatial learning. Right. I mean, that's fundamentally what it is. It's more about the way that we've gone about it. It's uh, multi sensory, it is experiential learning, and it's just very highly engaging. So, I wanted to take some time, uh, you know, it's not just to brag about it, but also to kind of let you know this is the fundamental experience that this package, not just the merge, you know, content, but some of the, you know, one of the other pieces of the, of the uh, option button with the code spaces. Uh, software leverages and yet another app that hasn't been mentioned yet, you know, also leverages this fundamental technological platform. And by the way, one thing I should note is that uh, uh, we've created sections for this uh, uh, for this presentation and Gail's monitoring the questions and she'll kind of stop, you know, near the end of the section and, and kind of group the questions. So we'll try to get to all of them, uh, but we want to do it in a way where you have the benefit of kind of hearing the entire section. We kind of stop and, and talk about the questions that apply to that section. So let me kind of move on to the different uh, different types of content that are available to leverage, you know, the Merge Cube experience. Um, let me first say that, uh, kind of remind you guys that uh, what uh, Emma and her team, you know, at MDOE, MDOE put together is that the ARV or option package, I believe it was called, it has a school-wide license for Merge EDU. It has 90 physical cubes and the shipping out to you. Um, it has a mobile cart uh, to uh, hold those cubes. It also has 90 licenses for a product called CoSpaces. Uh, which includes the Merge Cube add-on. I'll speak to what that is in just a bit, but that's the ARVR option package. So now I'm going to go, go into all right, how each one of these pieces leverages you know, the Merge Cube experience. So uh, by the way, this is not the demo part. This is just a very quick overview, and we'll get into the demo in just a second. But the way you can think about it, I'm first going to talk about the Merge EDU platform, Merge EDU software. Um, the thing that my company provides is the way you can think about it is that there, uh, there's the merge created content and then user created content. And in the merge created content, there are three apps. Uh, and hopefully this recording will pro uh, prevent you from having to write a bunch of notes. But the three major apps, again, I'm going to get into these are uh, Merge Explorer, which is where the science simulations are, an app called Merge Object Viewer which as far as the merge create content is where all the digital teaching aids, digitized manipulatives, uh, digitized, uh, uh, um, what do you call them, uh, manipulatives, um, physical models, that's where those are uh, as far as the merge created content. There is a third app, which for those of you who may have, you know, be familiar with us from the past, uh, this is fairly new news. There's an app called Merge Hologlobe. And the way that you can think about that is a digital globe with lots of different data sets that you can view as far as uh, Earth data. So that's the merge created content. But another thing that you can do is upload your own content. Um, I wanna be clear that we don't provide the tools for creating the content. I'll be describing some here in a bit, but the pieces of the merge EDU platform are, um, there's the web-based component, 
uh, the dashboard where you would upload and edit and manage your own objects. And then you would view them via the Merge Object Viewer app, which was the uh, second one that I mentioned before, because that app has two purposes. So um, that's what you can do with Merge UDU. Again, I'm going to get into a demo of all the stuff in just a little bit. Um, switching gears just a little bit, you know, in that package is something called CoSpaces. The way that you can think about CoSpaces, I don't want to uh, speak for them too much because it is a, uh, an independent product created by the independent company. We've got a great relationship with those guys, but it is an independent product from an independent company. Uh, product is called CoSpaces. The company is called Delitex. And the way that we understand is that it's a coding platform for 3D creations. What it's uh, particularly good for is creating augmented reality and virtual reality experiences. And what they did is they created something called that they call the Merge Cube add-on. And it's an extra module for viewing your creations on the Merge Cube, you know, leveraging the Merge Cube experience. So that's the second piece, um, you know, second overall piece of uh, this option, the ARB or uh, option that you selected. Um, but again, we're not going to speak too much of that because that's a separate company. If you want to learn how to use their product, I believe Emma's setting up, you know, some things, you know, for them. And like I said, we, they're the experts, not us. So I'm going to, uh, I don't want to speak too much to that. Um, so Emma, this might be new news even for you. Uh, maybe, maybe not, but this, and this probably hasn't come up yet. And I hope I don't introduce confusion, but there is another app that's out there, uh, again, by an independent developer and it's called Moment AR. And the way that you can think about, again, you know, we didn't create this, it's, uh, but it's a good friend of the family, if you will, uh, Kevin Shia. Um, and the way that they describe it is that it's an app for uh, helping out with communication and emotional development. And some of the programs that it tends to be used in is uh, working with kids who have autism, uh, maybe some uh, mental health issues, uh, language development uh, challenges uh, or social skills and or social skills. And what it has, again, I don't want to speak too much to it. Uh, I encourage you to kind of check it out. It's a free app, by the way, if I haven't mentioned. Um, and if you have any questions, you know, here's the uh, the, uh, the link or for how you can, can um, reach out to them. But the modules that it has are uh, each, uh, there's emotion. So each face of the cube represents an emotion. Like there's a, an angry character, a happy character, a sad character, et cetera. And then when you select one of those, um, then you have sub emotions. So there's different types of angry, different types of sad, different types of scared. Um, and so it help kid, helps kid talk about their emotion. Also has some other uh, modules for social skills and language development. Um, so that's another one that, uh, you know, even though the platform or, you know, the Merge you, you know, experience tends to be used most common, you know, in science and STEM programs, it can be used for a lot of other educational programs, uh, even for, you know, things like this. So uh, that is yet another app that leverages the whole Merge Cube experience. Before I get into the demo, um, Gail, is there anything that we should stop and address at the time or should I keep? Keep on rolling. We are good. We just have confirmation that teachers hate fun, but keep rolling. <laughs> okay. That was a joke, uh, I, I think. There we go. So um, what I'm going to do now, uh, guys, is uh, and I'm going to leave this link up here for a while, is uh, we're going to do a, quote, demo, but rather than kind of jumping around into, you know, live modules, I'm going to be leveraging a video um, and uh, for a couple of reasons. One is it helps me jump around the components a little bit more easily, particularly with you know the, the time frame that we have here tonight. The other reason is because if you go to this, you can see this full demo uh, on your own time. It's about seven minutes, it's narrated, but it's uh, at mergeedu.com, that's our website, by the way, slash demo. And it redirects to a YouTube page where you can see the video that I'm gonna use pieces of. Um, so with that, let me jump over to it. You can see here I'm on YouTube in about 15 seconds. And um, the Mer people who have used Merge EDU or say the Merge Cube, and sometimes they'll even call the company Merge Cube, uh, they're familiar with one part of it, but may not realize that there's a lot more to it. You know, as I kind of mentioned here for the Merge EDU platform, there are actually three apps and then all the web based components. And we're going to have a quick tour tonight uh, of all of it. But as a general overview, what we have are uh, the digitized teaching aids simulations, 
there are resources for leveraging those cap uh, you know what's in here such as um activity plans for the simulations stem projects that we've built out uh to leverage that capability to upload your own app um there's some basic classroom management tools and because a lot of you are you know kind of senior district leaders yes you know we can integrate to uh district single sign-on systems and rostering tools so uh, i'm gonna let this uh roll uh just for a little while and then kind of skip ahead but uh, what we're going to be doing is using this video to tour uh, two of the apps because Merge Hologlobe is so new that it's not part of this video yet, but I'll come back with a GIF that runs through that. And then I'm also going to give you a tour uh, actually of the live dashboard, um, at least my version of it. So in this video, if you kind of run ahead, there's a lot, as I mentioned, there's lots of different types of content um, uh, in here, and we're going to be just kind of jumping through each one of the individual apps. The one that we're best known for is an app called uh, Merge Explorer, as I mentioned. And I would say that it's kind of the, the slickest, sexiest, whatever term you want to use, you know, part of the platform. And uh, it's ideal uh, for teaching science or just kind of in future ready, you know, sorts of programs. Or even if you're doing non-science, non-STEM programming and want the kids to be able to interact with this for various reasons that I'll, I'll get into a little bit later. Um, this is kind of the, the coolest part of the platform, although we think the other parts are great too. Um, so let me kind of skip ahead to that. This is the app called Merge Explorer. And uh, this is where the simulations are. Um, the video is showing the view on actually kind of jumps back and forth between a smartphone view and a tablet view. This is a tablet view. The way you can think about it is uh, there's over 100 simulations now uh, within uh, the Merge Explorer app. Uh, we did group them into a series of what we call topic cards. And as the name suggests, uh, we group the simulations into some uh, logical uh, organization of what are, you know, kind of uh, similar themes. For instance, I'll kind of let the video roll here uh, just a bit on the homepage that you have. Uh, macrobiology, microbiology, earth systems, uh, weather systems, um, physics, uh, technology, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of different types of themes. And this is an example of one of the topic cards that's called types of reactions. One thing I should say is that each card, each topic card tends to have two or three uh, simulations. They're also called activities uh, inside of it. Some have one. I think this one has up to six. Most of them have about two or three. Um, so I just want to kind of show you what they look like and how they're organized. So uh, in this particular example, the top of the card is called types of reactions. And not surprisingly, it's about different types of reactions. And the way that they're organized is you have an introductory section uh, that kind of explains, you know, to the students what's going on in this topic card. Um, one thing uh, I'll point out is if you can see this icon here at the top right, that's a book. Uh, looks like a book with a speaker on top of it. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, we've incorporated Microsoft's immersive reader technology. And what that is, uh, it's a web-based tool, so it'll link off uh, you know, to, their, to, to their website. And it's basically a, a reading support tool, a text-to-speech engine, so that uh, if kids need some reading support, it will read the text aloud to them. And it tends to be you know, pretty desirable for the, the younger kids or if, you know, the kids with just some... Uh, uh, some challenges with reading. Um, it can read out in multiple languages in different accents, and you can also uh, change the speed and the accents and the shading uh, of the uh, uh, of, of what's being read out. Um, so it makes it easier, you know, kind of more learning support. Um, so after the introductory section, you have the individual you know, activities or simulations themselves. And I think the video rolls down to uh, I think number four. And this is um, a simulation called uh, Watermaker. So uh, there are, I'll kind of say that there are lots of different types of interactions that are built into uh, the simulation. So some of them, this one's fairly simple that you're using buttons to just add hydrogen atoms and oxygen atoms and water molecules start forming in the reaction chamber. But depending on uh, the nature of the content, they may be using sliders or kind of Angry Birds style, you know, uh, speeding up or slowing down in animation, lots of different types of interactions. But, you know, this is just one example of one of the simulations. Uh, again, sort of you're holding this reaction chamber, adding uh, 
uh, atoms to create water molecules in more and more form. And again, with a merged cube experience, and this is admittedly kind of a stylized rendering of it, but it what's different about it, what's unique about it is that the students are holding the reaction chamber in their hand and they're watching the molecules form and they can explore it from a lot of different angles. They can rotate it around, look at it from below, look at it from above, and just makes it uh, a lot more engaging in that hated fun word. Uh, so uh, this is, you know, again, one example of one of the simulation, but there are, uh, I think it's 124 built in the Merge Explorer. So what'll, uh, so those are the, the, you know, that's one example of one of the, uh, one of the simulations. Well, what will happen in terms of classroom management is that, uh, again, in this example, there are six simulations and the students can see their progress against interacting with all of the simulations within that topic card. So what will happen is this green bar will fill in as they do more and more. And the way that the app works, I want to kind of slow down here a bit. The way that the app works, and you may have noticed here, let me back it up a bit, is until you uh, interact with all of the simulations, you don't even, you have no access to the quizzes. You have to engage in all of them in order to even have access to the quizzes. But then what will happen when you've done so is the links to the quizzes um, displayed in this particular example. There are quizzes available. They're grade banded, by the way. So in this particular uh, topic card, because they can vary uh, by topic card, some of them are, uh, some of the topic cards are really designed more for the younger kids, some uh, only for the older kids. In this particular example, uh, is grade banded for K to two, three to five, six to eight. Um, they will select uh, the appropriate quiz and this will link them off to the uh, quiz. And this is, you know, all within the app. Um, one of the things I want to kind of stop and say is that uh, we view uh, Merge Explorer and really kind of the platform as a supplementary tool. You know, for learning, we don't tell you, hey, buy this and throw away your curriculum packages, right? So the quizzes, um, they're not an assessment tool. Uh, there are multiple choice questions. You have uh, an unlimited number of attempts to get it right. As a matter of fact, the information we feed back to the web-based teacher dashboard doesn't even you know, mention how many attempts were required to get them all right. Um, if you get a question wrong, we let you know that you got the question wrong, give you hints to the right answer, but you do have to select the right answer and you have to get all of the answers correct for all the questions eventually in order to finish out that topic card to complete. I'm going to see whether I can freeze it just at the right moment because it moves pretty fast. Okay. Actually, it's not showing in the video, but the, it will let the uh, student know in the app that congratulations, you have completed uh, the quiz successfully and your completion status is what's reported out on the web-based teacher dashboard. So you're a classroom teacher and you have uh, 25 students. You can quickly see on the dashboard who has completed that topic assignment and who has not. So, uh, Gail, before I move on to uh, Merge Object Viewer or anything that we should stop and address about Merge Explorer? Uh, no questions right now. We're good. Okay. So um, now we're moving to the second app that's called Merge Object Viewer. And as I mentioned before, uh, it has two purposes, and we're going to focus first on the digital teaching aids, which is the Merge Creative Content. Um, let me kind of step back and tell you the method behind the madness, because this is one of the uh, newer parts of the Merge EU platform. And because we developed all this during the pandemic, I'm not sure that the word got out to the same degree that, uh, you know, we become fairly famous for the simulations with the Merge Explorer. The uh, method behind the madness here was that as we, you know, during the, the worst part of the pandemic, we reached out to a lot of our customers, you know, our ambassadors, and they, how can we help? You know, how can we uniquely help? And among the many, many, many challenges that educators uh, were facing is they told us that, you know, um, they completely lost access to all those physical teaching aid kits or models or manipulatives, whatever you call them. Um, because first of all, when all the kids were at home, the kids are in the school. So of course there's zero access to them. When the kids first came back to school, there were a lot of uh, you know, very uh, locked down health protocols saying you shouldn't share resources. You don't want the same hands touching those kids. So they sat in the closet. But even in normal times, you know, as we kind of talked about, you know, the challenges, uh, you know, up front at the beginning of this session is that there's only one of those kids typically 
um, their expense. So you're not going to let the kids take them home for each individual object. Only one kid can have access to it at a time. Um, things get lost. The information gets outdated. So basically what we did was took the, you know, um, step and say, okay, that's the way that we can help. But along the way, we realized, wow, we can solve a much bigger problem, even for quote, normal times and uh, end of quote, um, that, uh, you know, having this in a digital form just creates a lot of possibilities that you do not have with the physical forms. So basically what we did was digitize over 40 kits. Uh, it's over a thousand objects. And we reached out to our customers and said, what, what kits do you have? And did a lot of research around, hey, what are some other kits that schools don't tend to have, but would like to have? And we created digital versions of them. And the way that we organized them, we literally did this was we researched, okay, what, what kits do they have? What is the name of the kit? What are the objects inside of the kit? So that they would be very familiar to teachers, right? Um, what you'll see here, this is a, a quick rendering of the, uh, uh, the homepage for Merge Object Viewer that you'll see they have very familiar names like the, you know, the classic moth and butterfly kit, butterflies in their life cycles, uh, circular, you know, uh, you tend to have uh, some plasticized anatomy kits like this for the circulatory system, anatomy in the eye or the brain, uh, different types of cells, uh, different types of eggs, dinosaur skeletons, et cetera. But uh, basically what we're, so we not only created all those, so that, but remember that because these are digital, everybody can have access to everything all the time, anywhere. So this really is revolutionary in terms of, and, and there's, it isn't anything else out there like this. So, um, so number one, just in and of itself, you have this capability to make this available to everyone all the time. Some other things that you can do with the digital versions that you can't do with the physical versions is, for example, this is a gemstones collection. I don't think I've ever met a school anywhere around the world that has a gemstones collection, right? Uh, as another example, we have dinosaurs and they're animated. I don't think anybody has animated dinosaurs, you know, walking around their school. Um, but there's just lots of different things that you can do, you know, with these digital versions. Um, and not only in terms of access, but we're going to kind of show you in terms of some of the interactions that you can do with them. So, for example, uh, this is, uh, uh, I think it's the gemstones collection. This is one of the objects called Sodalite. And you'll see here that we have a description of it, links out to the Wikipedia page for it, I believe. And uh, Amazon iGem, et cetera, et cetera. So this is just kind of one example of one kit. Uh, and we have, like I said, over a thousand objects, you know, built into this. So I did mention that uh, in addition to just the accessibility and, and you having them, the students having access to them, is that there are some types of interactions that you can do with the digital objects that you can't do with the physical ones. And here's a, um, one example of that in the, uh, uh, in the video, because people ask, okay, how would I use these? And our reply back is, well, you would use these in any way that you use, use the physical versions um, or uh, you know, some ways that you actually extend outside of that. For example, what you could do is assign as homework that the students will go into the animal teeth collection, which has you know, different teeth and skulls, and they can select two or three different ones and create a video of where they are presenting, you know, comparing and contrasting, you know, the different uh, uh, skulls and, and teeth collections, talking about, you know, how are they different and therefore how is the function probably different between these. And what we're also going to, you know, show you here in this video is... Uh, another type of interaction mode that uh, complements the cube mode. And it's something that we call world mode. So what you can see going on going on here is I'm gonna freeze the video you know, periodically, is that you can, and you don't have to have the cubes for this, by the way. So if the kids don't have access to the cubes at home, they can still do this as homework. So they're uh, taking the content and they're placing it, what it's called place and world uh, technology. And once they do that, you can put several objects side by side. You can manipulate them. You can kind of see the menu here at the bottom where you can change uh, the rotation, the horizontal and vertical position, even the scale it up and down. Because the kids love to take the dinosaurs and go out in their front yard and make the T-Rex, you know, 40 feet high. Uh, and he's standing next to the Triceratops. But in this particular example, they're uh, creating a video and they're explaining, you know, the, uh, the compar comparing and contrasting uh, the beaver skull and the saber tooth tiger. Um, and uh, we also create a little pedestal effect. So it kind of has a virtual museum sort of feel to it, which is pretty cool. 
Um, so this is uh, just want to give inspiration in terms of here is one way that you can use all of those digitized teaching aids in a way that you really couldn't, you know, with the physical versions. So those are, I believe that's the end of the video part with the digital teaching aids. Before I move on uh, to the next session, Gail, um, how are we, any questions we need to kind of address on the digital teaching aids? Um, Jeff asks, can this work on Mac OS or just iPad, phone, or tablets? Um, we'll get back to that question um, because what I want to do is tackle it during the, uh, the interaction mode. So let's park that question, but uh, we, we pledge to get to it. Okay, so I'm gonna switch gears here uh, because so far we've been showing merge created content. Um, now we're gonna talk about is the ability to upload your own objects. Um, again, I wanna be careful to state that in the merge you platform doesn't um, provide any tools for creating objects, but I'll be showing some here in just a bit, but you do have the ability to upload your own object and visualize it on, you know, with the merge cube experience. And, there's a lot of ways that this can be used. I'll be speaking to those in just a bit. But I would say its most popular use case is within STEM programs. Um, because basically what it does is it uh, accelerates the engineering design process, which by the way, you know, obviously doesn't apply to just engineering, but could apply to the arts and lots of other types of, you know, self-expression. But uh, again, I'm kind of focusing here, um, you know, for these purposes in the demo video, we just focus on STEM programs. So um, here's one example of, uh, for some of you may be familiar with what we're showing here uh, right now. This is Tinkercad, a uh, really popular and free and easy to learn tool for creating uh, objects. And uh, you're creating something in Tinkercad and freezing it again. One of the other really nice things about Tinkercad is that they have built in uh, to their file export menu, um, formatting the file for viewing it on the merge cube through the merge object viewer. Matter of fact, it will link to, if you set it up properly, you can link, uh, link it to your merge EDU account and it'll export directly into your merge EDU account on the dashboard, uh, which is really cool. Um, and so this is, I'll be showing this in a bit, the, uh, the merge EDU dashboard. Um, I will say that uh, in theory, we are agnostic as far as the tools that you use to create the objects. In practice, we're more familiar with uh, you know the quirks of certain tools than others. Uh, we did mention, you know, I mentioned that uh, Tinkercad is one of our favorites. Uh, and if you haven't checked it out, you should. It's free. It's fairly easy uh, to learn. Um, great, uh, you know, for younger kids, but even older kids. Uh, but we have seen, uh, you know, creations in Microsoft Paint, uh, Paint 3D, uh, Minecraft BDU. So those tend to be the tools used to, for, say, for the younger kids. If you have students that are heading down, say the older, you know, say the high school or Votech kids that are uh, heading down an engineering path, they may be learning SolidWorks. If they're heading down more of an artistic path, they may be using Maya. That's what our internal artists use. Uh, but there are other tools that can be used if you're not seeing something that's uh, that you're using within your programs. Um, there's also some really cool tools now that are kind of getting there where you can uh, scan, uh, load up an app on a device and scan a real world object and it will create a digital model uh, you know, of, of what you just scanned. So uh, we can give you some ideas for that if you want to follow up with Gail. But it's all my way of saying that uh, we really only care about the file type um, that the tool exports out to. And there's three major ones that we support and pretty much 98% of anything the world's going to export in those file types. And I would say like 99.99% of anything that you would use. Um, so uh, if you're not seeing, you know, your tool here on the screen, you know, reach out to Gail and we'll, we'll kind of investigate whether we have some familiarity with it. But basically what's happening in terms of what the Merge Cube uh, adds to the STEM programs, or again, you know, arts programs, uh, or any other programs where the students would be creating their own object is that uh, it just speeds up the cycles of uh, running through iterations of it, right? Because what happens is uh, you upload the object to the web-based dashboard. And at that point, every object has unique object code. Um, and what you can do with that object code, let's think about the different steps. You can push it out to your teammates. It can be shared with your teammates so you can collaborate and discuss how you want to manipulate the object, kind of change it and edit it for where you want to get it to. When that team is fairly happy with it, they can share that object code with the teacher. The teacher can give feedback in terms of either the aesthetics or the nature of it, or 
if it's going to go to a 3D printer, which is a really popular use case for this, is they can give feedback like, hey, you know, that arm is extending out way too far. This is not going to print successful, you know, that kind of thing or any other type of feedback. And then when, when they're done, you know, running through these cycles because it's all virtual. And by the way, you can do this at home with homework, right? Because it's all virtual. Um, and even if you don't have the cube, you can still experience it, you know, uh, say in world mode or 3D mode. This is another one we'll be showing here in a bit. Um, and then when you're kind of happy with the object, you can share it with your classmates and present it or just kind of show off or the uh, the class could create, you know, their own portfolio of, uh, you know, their own uh, kind of private collection of the objects that have been uploaded. So, uh, and it's really popular for uh, in, in combination with a 3D printing program because you really want to get that object right before you send it to the printer, right? Uh, because 3D prints take a long time. Um, they uh, filament's expensive and we use 3D printing a lot and probably half our prints fail. We're creating big things. Um, so it's really popular uh, for that. So before I kind of move along to the dashboard, any questions, Gail, that we should address, we can address on uh, the upload your own capability? No additional questions right now. Great. Okay, so what I'm doing now, guys, is getting out of the video and going on to, this is the live dashboard, this is a merge admin dashboard, so you can see some functions here in the menu that you won't have access to. But I want to give a quick tour of, uh, you know, so far we've been looking at apps, but here this is the web-based dashboard, and you would sign into, you know, with your account to dashboard.mergeu.com. And there are a lot of resources here, you know, on the dashboard. Um, so I'm going to go through a couple of, uh, well, well, most of it. So the first thing that you can see here is that you have a quick view of what are what is all the content, the merge created content that's available uh, within the app. So for example, here I've clicked on the science simulations and you have uh, you know, kind of a computer you know, formatted view for what are all of the available topic cards. If I clip on, click on any one of the topic cards, say for instance, a frog's life, I'll see that there are two different activities, what they are. There's the uh, virtual frog dissection, that one's really popular. Uh, there's also one for looking through, you know, uh, stepwise the life cycle of a frog. Uh, you also have, I'm just going to say very quickly that if you're, uh, you know, on your, uh, on the device itself, you can launch that uh, top of card directly in the app through that link. This is where you have the link to the activity plan. So I'll show that in just a second. Um, the third button here is that's what you would click on to go look at the quiz results um, for your class. I'm going to show you here real quick that you have several different options to share content. And you'll see here that you can, uh, you know, here's the card code. You can print a QR code. You can copy this link, put it in your LMS, and push it out. Say if you use Google Classroom or School of G or PowerSchool, or whatever. Um, so you have a couple of different options for sharing content. And uh, also just kind of quickly say that you can share an entire topic card or just an individual activity. It's up to you. Um, so I'll show uh, an activity plan here in just a second. Um, you also have a similar view to save a little time. I'll say that you have uh, similar views for all of the teaching aids. So you have a quick view of what are all the collections, you know, that are available uh, for the anatomy of the brain, uh, what's inside that collection. I'll see all of the objects that are inside that collection. And then you have the same share options that I showed before for the simulation. So you, and again, you can share an entire collection or just an individual object up to you. Um, we also have, a, and this one I haven't talked about yet. Again, it's, it's such a new app that uh, we don't have it in that demo video yet, but I'll kind of show you to in just here in just a second, but you'll see here that within the Merge Hollow Globe app, what are the available uh, activities? So you see here vegetation, ice, world map, fires, satellites, temperatures, precipitation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so uh, you have a quick view of what's available in all three apps. And again, those same sharing uh, tools. All right, so that's kind of quick views and sharing tools for the content. Let's talk about the teacher support tools. So uh, as I mentioned, one of the things that you have access to, and this is another way to get at, is that the, uh, the web-based dashboard is where all of the activity plans are stored. Um, and they are mapped to the individual topic cards. So if I click on, oh, what are the available topic cards within a frog's life. And within a frog's life, you'll see here that this particular one has, uh, and again, we grain banded it to match to uh, the quizzes, is K to two, three to five, six to eight. To save a little time, I've already pulled up uh, what does an activity card, uh, I'm sorry, an activity plan 
look like. So this is the three to five uh, activity plan for a frog's life. And these should be very familiar format too. That was by deliberate design. And we engage with you know, some of your peers uh, around the country to develop these. So what we have here at the top are what are the essential questions that we're gonna tackle uh, within this activity. Uh, and then the wording of the activity is step-by-step, -step, hopefully foolproof. Um, and they're neutrally worded so that they can be used both in the context of a teacher, you know, kind of walking around the room and guiding the activity, or even the student is self-directing within the classroom or even at home, uh, running through the activity. So you know, run run through everything stepwise. There are questions that it's asking, probing questions that it's asking along the way. After they finish that, uh, we have a couple of different assessment options. Um, they are fairly similar across each activity plan. You know, there's a video recording you could do. Uh, some answer to the essential questions within your class notebook. There's the in-app quiz. And then we also have uh, extension ideas. Uh, something else that uh, we think you guys will like a lot, because uh, I believe that you're in an NGSS state, uh, we have printed out on the activity plans here at the bottom that like these are the NGSS standards that this activity um, addresses. Um, so, and we've listed out the performance expectations within NGSS and even the specific codes for it. So that's what an activity plan looks like. Uh, another section that you have uh, on the dashboard are all the STEM projects to leverage that capability again to upload your own objects. And so we've built out some kits here uh, for, uh, my friend, let me kind of go back, sorry about that, I should have silenced my phone. Um, we have, uh, a, let me back up one second. So we've built out a uh, very complete kits for uh, STEM projects. And we made them uh, oriented around future careers uh, for a lot of reasons, but they are um, challenge based so they can be used at any grade level and for any length of time, uh, whether you wanna make that for a couple of weeks, uh, an entire semester, even an entire year, that's up to you. Uh, but you'll see here the examples that have been uh, created so far as future builders, future chefs, engineers, inventors, project designers, if you guys, if any of you have some ideas of additional ones that you'd like to be created and like to partner with us to create them, we'd love to have that discussion with you. would love to partner on that. These are the ones that we have so far. Um, when you click on one of these, you'll see that these are very complete kits. You'll see here, for instance, for future builders, uh, in the introduction of what is going on, uh, what's the nature of the challenges being addressed uh, within this particular project. And then what you have down here is links to uh, all of the documents. And on the left-hand side, you'll see this is the main guiding document for this um, the STEM project. And then off to the right, you have the supporting worksheets for each phase of that project. And again, to save a little time, I already pulled these up. And uh, again, guys, this is a, an orientation session, not a PD, so I'm throwing a lot at you, doing a quick skim here. Um, but uh, so for instance, with the, the guiding main guidance document, you'll see here that it tees up what are the resources that you're gonna need? What is the nature of the challenge that we're taking on? This is sustainable buildings. Uh, and then we run through the different phases. You know, the first phase is ask ourselves, what is it that we're trying to accomplish? Phase two, you know, step two, starting to imagine solutions. Step three, starting to plan out different ideas for the solution. Step four, start creating, you know, your first versions of the salute of the solutions. And of course, step five, you know, running in the cycles of the improvement cycle, again, leveraging you know, this, uh, this platform capability to enable a lot of iterations on the engineering design process for uh, improvement, You know, trying something, getting feedback, trying another version and kind of going through that several times. But then uh, at the end of the project, uh, you know, we ask you to share it. And by the way, we don't just say create a video, we give you here the seven different bullet points that you should cover you know, within that video. So a lot of guidance here in terms of managing the project. And again, they're written in neutral language so that they can be used by the teacher to guide it or for the students to read this document and uh, do some self-driving you know, of their activities you know, for the STEM project. Um, just to show you one example of the supporting documents, this is for the research phase, research step, I should say. Um, so we say, hey, you know, this is where you do the initial research. And I believe this one, uh, we give you supporting worksheets for uh, go research four different materials and then four different uh, energy harvesting solutions for the build, you know, that you're going to create during this project. And again, we don't just tell you to go research and we say, you know, here's the supporting worksheet for material number one. What was the source of information? 
that you use? Or source says, uh, where could this be used within your build? Uh, what, what did you actually find and how would this actually help the build? So that's materials one, give you, you know, supporting worksheets for three more. And then same basic sort of thing for the diff different energy harvesting solutions. What was the source? How is this environment environmentally friendly? What did you actually find? How does this help power the build? And to save a lot of time, I'll say, you know, we've done the same sort of uh, supporting documents to guide all of the other phases of the project. Um, let's see, we're, we're running a, a little bit tight on time. So I'm just going to kind of quickly say that another thing that you have here is uh, the tools uh, for uploading the object. You may remember this from the video. Uh, you just kind of do a drag and drop to upload it. Once an object is uploaded, there's a lot that you can do with it. Um, including just kind of renaming it. There's a lot of different visual editing tools that you have at your disposal. Um, you can also uh, change the thumbnail on it. Um, you have all of those sharing options that I talked about before. And you can also create your own custom collections, you know, of your objects or other people's objects, right? And so this is what I'm saying that the class could also create its own custom collection for, uh, say, what were the final, uh, final builds for a particular STEM project. So you have all those capabilities, you know, on the web-based dashboard. Um, and I believe with that, also just kind of quickly say that uh, we have uh, the admin tools. Um, if you're going to do things manual, we can connect to rostering systems and single sign-on systems. But if you want to do some manual creation of student accounts, uh, teacher accounts, classes, and then associations between teachers and classes, you also have the capabilities to do that. If you as a teacher administrator have, you know, the... Uh, I've been given the administrative permissions. Okay, so um, Gail, any questions about the dashboard before I jump back over to uh, the presentation? No questions about the dashboard. All right, so um, yeah, let me talk very quickly about uh, Merge Hollow Globe. I uh, promise to do that. Is that a, it's a standalone app, and this is something that we created in partnership with NASA. And what you basically have is a lot of different data sets. If you're holding the Earth in your hand, it's a digital globe. Um, this is actual data uh, from NASA and NOAA, um, including some real-time data from satellites or near real-time. There's a little bit of a gap, uh, but it's a wide variety of data sets. Uh, you kind of saw that from the dashboard. And this enables things like studying trends and making predictions. Uh, there's world maps on it, uh, which is great for geography. Um, so you can use it for things well beyond, you know, earth sciences. You can use it for social studies when you start talking about um, what is the weather in different parts of the world, how might that impact uh, the nature of life there. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, that's Hologlobe. And so now we've given a very uh, quick orientation, like what are all the different pieces of the Merge EDU platform. Uh, now I'm going to talk about quickly the different interaction modes that are possible. And now, I, and here's where I will address that question on devices. So there are three different ways that you can uh, right now, because we're going to add a fourth later, um, but I'll just kind of plant that teaser for now. There are three different ways that you can fundamentally interact with the content. The one that uh, we're most famous for, and the reason you have the physical cubes is cube mode. Uh, during the demo video, I showed uh, very quickly world mode, and that's where you're taking the content and placing it in your world. Um, and you don't need the cubes for that, so it's great for take-home assignments. And then um, there is another mode that's uh, available called 3D mode. And if there are devices that are not capable of doing the other two, um, you still do have access to all of the content um, and the same types of interactions with it. Like in this particular example, you're touching the screen to explode out you know, the different tectonic plates. And it's still three-dimensional, so not 2D content. Um, but this is, uh, it's not augmented reality, this particular experience, but it does accommodate devices that are not capable uh, of augmented reality. So let's kind of step back uh, and talk about, and this is a really interesting time to have this discussion, and I would have different answers if this were a couple of weeks from today. So let's talk about the devices that can do this as of December 6th, because this is going to change radically within the next couple of weeks. Um, if the device has a built-in rear-facing camera running iOS or Android um, or, or some, some uh, Windows uh, devices as well, they can do um, all of this. They can, well, I, I should say if it has a built-in rear-facing camera, like a, um, I think on Windows side, Surface devices, 
um, could do this as one example. It, it can do, uh, those devices can support cube mode and world mode. Um, if the Chromebook has a built-in rear-facing camera, it can also run these modes. So let's talk about Chromebooks that do not have a built-in rear-facing camera, only had a, a student-facing webcam. As of December 6 at 4.57 Eastern time, um, they should be able to run 3 mode within the next couple of weeks. A lot of Chromebook models, if they were built within, say, the last couple of years, will also be able to uh, have a cube mode experience. Now, it's going to be a little bit different, right, because the cube is between your eyes and the screen. So it's going to be a little bit different experience than if the cube is behind the screen, but it's still going to be very engaging. Matter of fact, a lot of people, there's some people who kind of prefer it uh, over, you know, kind of the rear facing camera. So um, if you were to ask me, well, is, is, is it going to support my devices? That's what, let's have a one-on-one -on -one discussion about that. Uh, you know, Gail will be happy to field those questions. But within the next couple of weeks, uh, this is a major announcement. One of the biggest releases that we've ever done. Matter of fact, there's a special webinar that's happening tomorrow. Some of you may have gotten uh, an email blast about that that Leslie Fisher is hoping, which we're announcing that capability, Q, the Q mode experience for Chromebooks that only have the student facing webcam. Um, we've had uh, a couple of schools ask us, what about Mac OS? Um, Mac OS is uh, not supported. Um, it's not something that's on the near term radar. Uh, if it's something that uh, a lot of you used, you know, let us know. And I can go back to my biz bar and we can talk about the support, but I don't want to make any false promises about that. Mac OS uh, doesn't have support for any of these modes. One other caveat that I should mention is that if you're running Windows, we do not have a Windows version for Hologlobe. As I mentioned, Hologlobe is the fairly new app, so we don't have that up yet. I don't have a specific timeline for that, but um, uh, a lot of Windows devices are capable of running the other two apps. So I know that's an important question. Gail, are you seeing any more questions on interaction modes or device support? Just a more specific question about 3D scanning apps, uh, but we might need to look into that a little bit more. Yeah, uh, that one, uh, I'll just kind of say quickly, you know, because the recordings are, uh, there's one called Turnio, I believe it's TRN.io. Um, and then oh, what is the other one? Clone. Clone is no longer has a free version, so they've oh, made really? changes. Well, that's that's new news. That's Q L O N E. That's too bad. That one's pretty cool. Uh, but those are some of the apps uh, you know that you can use. And again, uh, you can reach out to Gail on that. All right. So I know that we're at four o'clock. So I'm going to kind of go through the rest of this fairly quickly. Uh, and Emma, you let me know when we have a hard stop. But I'll try to get through the rest of this fairly quickly. I did want to focus, you know, most of the time on giving you the orientation and overview of what is Merge U, what's in here. So we've done that. Um, the rest of this is going to be around how have we seen educators use it? And then a couple of ordering questions, because um, as we, you know, kind of get into get past the ordering phase into the usage uh, phase, one of the things that we, uh, you know, will be heavily, will heavily drive, you know, how do you want to get set up is how do you want to use it initially? And uh, here I'm going to kind of go quickly that uh, I've won a lot of awards from ed tech um, uh, uh, influencers and publications, some great endorsements. Uh, I'm going to kind of skip past this. Um, but let's kind of go through how have we seen, this isn't us brainstorming, how it could have been used, this is how it has been used. Um, and one of the things, uh, you know, we're kind of asked to address is that, yes, uh, I would say that 80% of the time Merge GDU is being used to teach science or is used in the context of a STEM program or a future tech program. Those are its most popular use cases. However, there's a lot of other ways that it has been used and you could think about using it. And one of the steps, and you guys know this, right, because a lot of you are the instructional technology leaders that sometimes it isn't just a matter of, hey, we're going to start because this is who needs it the most, but also who's going to use it, you know, who are their future uh, kind of, uh, you know, future capable, uh, leading edge kind of lead dog, you know, teachers that will kind of take this ball and run with it. Um, because you have school-wide licenses, you can use it, you have unlimited usage for everyone on campus, so you can use it for anything that you want. Uh, so some of the other ways that we've seen it used is in the library, uh, in makerspace programs, again, for that capability to upload your own object. Um, lending libraries, I would all say traveling STEM kits, traveling STEM buses, you know, is another one. Um, CTE programs, 
um, coding programs, you know, probably more so for the um, uh, using the code spaces uh, program there. I've mentioned art that, you know, this is a 21st century medium of self-expression is a natural for arts programs. Um, geography, particularly the Merge Hologlobe app. Uh, social studies, that's another one we've seen uh, Hologlobe use. English language arts, um, because when you look at, I would also say, you know, the one right below it uh, for uh, English as a second language, a learning language situation is that you do have, not only with Microsoft for immersive readers, but we have different language packs, particularly for Merge Explorer. So you can jump back and forth between different languages. You know, we're down here in San Antonio. Uh, Spanish is an incredibly important language down here. And the kids can jump back and forth between English and Spanish and kind of latch on to, you know, phrases that they may be familiar with at home and making the connection to what I call learning academic uh, English. Or just kind of, you know, expressing yourself, learning language. Uh, in terms of different that's kind of subject material, but in terms of other types of programs, uh, specific programs that we've seen in terms of not only special lab situations with the everyday classroom, but after school programs, summer school programs. I'm proud to say that we've seen it used in both GT programs and special ed programs, so kind of both ends of the spectrum. Being intellectual honest, GT, that's probably going to mean more your younger kids, uh, maybe not kind of your AP juniors and seniors. Um, and with moment they are the last bullet point there we've seen it you know used for you know SEL programs so there are a lot of different ways that you can use this and we want you guys like I said you have unlimited usage across your programs we want you guys to get a lot of value out of this um, all right so very quickly let's get on to you know some help resources and as I mentioned you know uh, here at the, the get-go is uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot more help coming along the way in terms of um, PD, you know, specific kind of step-by-step -step PD. Um, but let's also talk about ordering since we do have, you know, it is December 6th and we do have an end of month deadline. So most of you are in good shape, but just very quickly for those of you who are maybe just getting started uh, in terms of ordering, um, I would just say contact us, right? We're, we're here to help. This is Gail's uh, uh, contact information, Gail dot simons at merge edu.com or just gail at merge edu.com will get you there uh that's her phone number um but generally what's going to happen is you will buy the merge products from us so that's the school-wide license and the physical cubes um you buy from us you will need to get quotes and and uh purchase the co-spaces licenses from uh it, you can the name of the company is delight text uh, but their website is cospaces.io I would just say some of you reached out to say, hey, we haven't heard from CoSpace as well, because the, the email is probably coming from delighttext.com. So check your spam folder uh, for that. Um, we're coordinating with them. We told them, hey, here's everyone who's contacted us. And we've kept a, a running hosted list and let them know every time, you know, someone new comes along. So we're coordinating with them. So if you haven't heard from them, contact us. We'll, we'll help you get in contact with them. The mobile cart, you do need to uh, order from Amazon. I believe Amazon's kind of sent, and her team has sent out links for that. Uh, in terms of meeting the deadline, if you're kind of concerned, if you haven't, if you haven't gotten completed and you're concerned about it, we will help you. Th this is very, very doable. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, it's December 6th, but we have time here, but you should place your orders as soon as possible. But we initiate shipping the same day uh, that we uh, get the order. And we're currently seeing about six days of transit time, uh, which is, like I said, very doable. And we give you the invoice the same day we get to purchase. So we're moving fast. And Yale's been great. Our accounting team has been great. Our shipping team has been great. This can be done. But if you haven't ordered yet and you want to, please contact us ASAP. Uh, in terms of preparing for usage, um, there's a couple of different thoughts that we have in addition to again reach out to us we're here to help is uh there is a free trial that you can um register for just off of our website mergeedu.com and we've seen that several of you have done that it gives you 14 days of access if you need longer just reach out to us we'll extend it um but this can uh get you familiar with you can start exploring the content and playing with that ability to upload your own objects poking around on the web-based dashboard um for those of you who are, who are responsible for it, you do have three apps to download. So um, you're gonna wanna start thinking about um, how do you distribute that along with all the devices where you wanna download it. There is a set of domains that you do need to whitelist um, so that the apps are usable. And we, we encourage you to do that so you can do some basic functionality tests. Like, hey, does everything 
need, seem to be working, uh, you know, uh, are you be able? Are you able to download and install the apps at all? Are you able to act, open it up, access it, etc.? And then, um, you know, that's kind of the technical aspects. But you know, more importantly, is start thinking about where how you might use it within your educational programs. At least starting out, you can always grow it, right? Another thing that you may want to think about is the administrative structure that you set up, because something that we enable is that there are multiple tiers of hierarchy that uh, you have the ability to have. Um, and especially those of you who bought all of several bundles is that you can have a district level administrator. You can have a regional level administrators, but those tend to be like the really ginormous districts down in Florida and Texas. Um, I, I don't know, you don't need to use that, but then you can have a school level and then even down to the class level. So. Something that we've seen uh, get created and you may want to think about is that you set up and we associate licenses and administrative privileges with an email address. So we've seen uh, people uh, create uh, kind of generic admin accounts like, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Lewiston, you know, uh, merge admin at lewiston.org or whatever your email address is that you kind of set that up so multiple people can share that or, you know, kind of people go in and out. You're setting up a, sort of a generic naming structure for that email address and kind of get the email address going. Um, and then another thing that you can think about is that um, we've seen, especially for starting out, is that uh, most of the time uh, the schools are setting up for individual accounts, meaning each student has their own account and you will need those if you want to have individual tracking you know, of their progress uh, against topic cards, you know, completion of topic cards or to have an ownership over your own object. But if you're doing with a future ready program, sometimes they'll start out with device accounts or generic accounts. Like there's one account that's shared across 30 devices and it's utilized in a lab environment. Again, starting out, it doesn't have to be an either or it can be start with one and um, and then migrating toward another. And uh, let's see, yeah, the last thing that I'll kind of quickly say, uh, this last slide is uh, uh, we're, we'll kind of uh, take Emma's lead on, uh, you know, she and her team are organizing additional sessions. And I think this is where we'll start getting into the stepwise thing, uh, uh, step by step of, uh, there'll probably be different sessions, like how do you use the different pieces for teaching science? How do you use it more in the context versus how do you use it more in the context of a STEM project or other kind of programming where, you're uploading your own objects and the students are going through the iterations. Um, we'll, we also have ongoing webinars in general, you know, for uh, for all of our customers. And then, uh, you know, our website, mergeu.com, there's a couple of really helpful uh, links there. One is to the Help Center, where we have a lot of getting started articles. Um, that's where you can find the whitelist, for example. Um, and there's also Help Button, which uh, uh, opens up a link directly to create a ticket in our customer support system. And as I mentioned many, many times, contact Gail. You know, Gail, Gail's here to help. I'll get involved. You know, just need to be here to support. But, uh, you know, that's, again, that was one of my biggest goals here is just kind of establish the connection. You know, for those who, those of you who haven't, we haven't really talked with yet, is we are here to help through the ordering, you know, uh, for support and most, you know, just with, through the rest of the month, but then making sure that you get up and going successfully and that you actually get the educational value that you got this thing for. And uh, so anyway, with about uh, five minutes to go, Gail, are there any other questions that we should address quickly? Just wanted to clarify that the webinar with Leslie Fisher is tonight and that's 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. Eastern. Um, so if you can't attend, that will also be recorded and we're gonna yeah. send out that link. It'll be available for about a week to watch that. Yeah. We're sending it up by blasting because it's going out to a lot of people, so look out for that. But if you have questions on that, again, reach out to Gail and she can make sure that you have a link to that. That one, again, specifically talking about cube mode on Chromebooks that only have the student facing webcam. That's what that webinar is dedicated to. Well, Emma, that's, uh, that's what we got. I don't know if there's anything you want us to address, but I'm kind of turning it back over to you. No, I don't think so. If folks have any questions that come up um, after this meeting, you know, know that you can reach out to Gail or myself. Um, Wendy, I will uh, email the recording to the participants who have registered, but we will also post it on the website where you found the registration link um, as well. So it'll be in both places. And thank you once again for selecting Emerge. We deeply appreciate it. Thank, thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Yeah.